welcome to the 2019 U.S. Open Straight Pool Championship. Proudly presented by Q Sports International and hosted in Las Vegas at Griff's Billiards. This is the finals. It is one race to 150. Let's meet our opponents. First up, coming up from the one loss side of the chart, Mr. Billy Thorpe. And his opponent still undefeated in this tournament. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Shane Van Boning. My esteemed colleagues in the booth are Mitch Ellerman and George Teachea. Gentlemen, you may lag for a break and have a great game. Thank you, Mr. John Lehman. And here we are, folks, down to the nitty gritty. Shane Van Boning, Billy Thorpe, a repeat of our final for the Bank Pool Championships. Shane the first leg I've lost, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Billy let them know how he feels. It's the first leg he's lost. Good, and it's the I, first time you can break that. And I came up with, uh, with Ben earlier. Uh -huh. I come up with my own Michael Buffer impression. First one Let's get three. ready to run balls. All right, getting a little <laughs> little run balls. I like that. Uh, let's not, not get ready to run. I thought he was going to say get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to run balls. That's yeah, very good. A little, little billiard sense of humor. Yes, it's a good one. I like it. It works. Well, Shane came through with wins over Mark Vidal, Billy Thorpe, and Billy came back around. Shane also defeated Warren Kiamko, which Billy did the same thing with. And now they get to meet in the final. This title has eluded Mr. Van Boney. He owns every other U.S. Open title but this one. So I have a feeling that he's going to want this one. Boy, Billy sold out with that break. Didn't hit it as well as he thought he could and uh, left that bottom ball open for Shane and we'll see what kind of uh, exhibition Shane's going to put on. Well, usually when he puts, when he gets into a final, he puts on a fine exhibition. It's, uh, it's a higher level of intensity uh, and it seem, he just seems to step it up every time he comes into a final. Billy had a couple of tough matches. He was in a he was in a tough match with uh, Corey Poole where he was trailing and uh, was able to come back and win. Um, well, here he already is uh, three balls in, and he's in a tough mm -hmm. situation. Well, Billy defeated Corey Duell 125 to 113 and came from a long way down. Well, it was similar to Gabe Owens come back. Uh, sure. He was down uh, 98 to 3 at one point, and it only became like a 30-point uh, game. Uh, Billy defeated in 125 to 98. I don't know why I ever say Shane's in trouble. <laughs> he can scramble. He can scramble. He looks around, just wants to find the best way to handle. And, and here again, look how well the balls are spread out for him. Yeah, he's already looking at where he wants to be. He's thinking about leaving the eight ball there for his breakout and just run the rest of the potatoes he sees. He's just going to play tic-tac, connect the dots here. Um, in straight pool, I think the less you move your cue ball, the better off you are. Kind of similar to eight ball in a way. Just to find yourself a nice pattern to run the balls. Try not to disturb the potatoes, as Mitch might say. And um, work your way through the rack. Just don't lay the cue ball up against any ball. Try not to treetop yourself. And you definitely don't want to go into one of those um, holes that he just went by with the cue ball. Seven ball, six ball, 
A little bit of an angle. Will he bump to four is the question. Mm, he bumped it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's curious. Uh, I'm curious. Learning a lot about seeing what these guys prefer for breakouts, and it seems like a uh, negative angle where the cue ball is slightly behind the object ball. That mm -hmm. way uh, they use mm -hmm. a lot of that angle to come into the ball, not so much uh, having a decent cut at Oh, he's getting rid of the eight. Maybe saving the uh, 11 ball. No, nope. pocket the 13 inside. Spin around three rails, maybe? Is he hit it with inside? I just don't understand why you just wouldn't jump up, pocket the 11, spin up for the 13, and then the 12, the well, two balls on top. might leave it there for a breakout. Okay. So he's thinking, yeah, shoot yeah. the 8, leave the 11. Yeah, if he's shooting the 8 ball, then he is leaving the 11 ball. But as we saw him earlier... Uh, mapping out the 8. Yeah, mapping out the 8, exactly. Great description. Mapping out, I was going to say gauging. We have a little uh, Wikipedia of terms that we make up as we go. At what point does he shoot the four? Now. Comes up for the 12. Yep, 11 balls a break ball. He'll shoot the 12 next, the 13 after that. And at that point, his extension actually came into play. Mm. Hmm. We were talking about, uh, earlier we were talking about um, no one's really used an extension. We only see it used once or twice. And uh, Mitch pointed out, Shane uses it every shot. So again, his cue ball is lightly behind the 11. Easy cut shot, easy back cut. This way you can send the cue ball a little bit higher pace naturally going into the rack. <laughs> Shane uh, getting uh, picked on a little bit by Billy saying he can't add, so they're asking if John's going to be the scorekeeper, and he is. <laughs> so he's over there with a seat. Uh, he says this is a score for them. Yep. Six on the side, the 14 in the corner. I think the five ball goes past the deuce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the four on the side if he wants to continue to break up the stack. Just Mitch is calling out the options. It's always good to do. And they have quite a few playing this game. More variables in play, a little bit more to choose from. See how you want to work your way back to your break shot. Which is probably yet to be decided. 13 would work right now, but having those uh, four balls underneath it there and in the rack, uh, more than likely the 13 will get moved. He's playing to five. open the rest of the stack. Oh, I think if he's going to break open the stack, he'd, yeah, this works out a little nicer. Side pocket. He had his insurance ball there. He's going to have to use his insurance. Stop it for the three. See how they try to keep them, uh, how Shane tries to keep the majority of the balls below the side pocket. He wants to keep all the balls inside that. Oh, wow. Shane missed that ball. Well, I... 
So Shane gets nine balls there, five balls there. That's nine total of 19. Actually, I shouldn't give out scores. We have scorekeepers that, uh, that do that, and I always make mistakes. I think Billy is content to leave that. No, he's not. He's going to shoot something else for a break shot. He might even use the eight. First meeting this tournament, I believe they had a five inning match, which uh, Billy ran 73 balls, Shane ran 68, but Shane walked away with the win. So it didn't take long, I think it was right at an hour, an hour and three minutes or an hour and two minutes. <laughs> but this one should take just a little longer as they're going to 150 balls, 25 more balls, so two more racks. We're close to two more racks. You can hear John Lehman out there saying, telling him the score. Uh, things got a little tricky. He's got a lot of bit tricky. Billy in disbelief yeah. with, uh, as good as he hit the breakout. Wow. Everything wow. come back to him. Little combo here. He might play back. three cross on yes. it or back cross cut it. I think, uh, I think he's going to back cut it. Or play the combo. <laughs> Wasn't close. <coughs> Didn't leave too much. <laughs> Chain in disbelief saying, wow, I don't have a shot after this either. <laughs> It uh, looks like the four ball does not go by the 15 in the side. Uh, he may have a shot on the, nah, he may not have a shot on the long shot on the one by the seven. He really doesn't, he's perplexed. He, he's like, I don't have a shot. What would you think about bringing that cue ball two rails and try to lodge it right between the nine and the six ball? Awfully accurate, kind of crazy, very low percentage. That's what I would think. Well, he's got a little bit of a shot on the one, but it's for distance. Yes, yeah. From that angle right there, he, he's calling the seven. Oh, he's, he must be back cutting it to the side or? Oh, right past the one. Oh, past the one. Wow. What well. There's no question his eyes are better than mine. Oh, yeah, Shane's eyes are good. Yes, they are. <laughs> At some point, he wants to get easy. Oh, he's corner hooked for the nine. So now his shot becomes the 14 ball straight down the straight down the rail. This is a tough shot. Five in the side. Can 
Did you see the five minutes? Wow. Yeah, that's what he's lining up for. It's all I could see him possibly shoot. Such accuracy. So he's had a tester on the seven ball, tester on the five ball. Maybe he'll get a little bit, some easy uh, shots under his belt. <laughs> Put a little bit of a run together. Yeah, he's... He's tested his shots. He's tried and tested for the day. So again, he starts with 10. think the over-under is for the time on this match? It's 616 at the moment. I'm saying it's over within an hour. So an hour and 15 minutes, hour 16 minutes for 150 balls. Already goes. Doesn't want to shoot the four, or does he? Is he afraid of moving the thirteen when he shoots the four? He's looking at this twelve ball. Wow. All the way around for the two balls. In the middle of the table there on top. Another surprise. Shane Stateman there is saying, I don't care how far they are. I don't care. Uh, I'm just going to shoot balls in the hole. He had an angle to come away from the rail. Current score is 32 to 10. Favor of Mr. Van Voting. Mr. Van Voting is at the table. two balls. He's done that quite regularly. Him and Warren were pocketing balls he two at a time. Yeah. Long. So Shane a little bit more than 20% of the way there. The stack here could send that cue ball to the head of the table, sliding off the three. He hit multiple balls and did not power through it. He just kind of eased it up. Making sure he makes the ball, but a good follow through to make mm -hmm. sure he rearranges the furniture lightly so he's not in trouble. Good points by our pro player, Mitch Ellerman.
for those of you out there that plan to be coming to va into a uh, vacation into Las Vegas, these guys will all be here for the summer since they're having quite a bit of pool here and a couple of tournaments that will be, there's one that's invitational, which will have, I'm sure, both of these gentlemen invited since it will be the top 64 players. And that would be the Predator World 10 Ball Championships, which is $100,000 added. And they'll invite 64 players from around the world. You can look up some information at world10ball.com. That'll be July 22nd through the 26th. And during that time, the BCA Pool League World Championships, along with the USA Pool League National Championships, the 17th through the 27th of July will be held at the Rio. And I believe it'll be, that Predator 10 ball will be at a arena in the Rio. It will be nine, nine foot diamonds. And the 17th through the 20th of July is the Diamond Las Vegas nine ball open with $25,000 added. Interesting to see is uh, watching Shane play this much just directly, also commentating. You pay attention to his pre-shot routine and how consistent it is all the time. Extremely I mean, consistent. You wonder why he gets reproducible results. There's a head start, folks. Yeah, watch his feet. If you if if the cameras ever if ever pans to his feet before a shot, they're almost always together. Then he steps to the shot. Step right in the line. When I'm giving pool lessons, I like to call it my billiard dance step. Okay. Whatever your bridge hand mm -hmm. is, your bridge foot comes with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's parallel, it's balanced. It's a good way to explain it. That'll help me when I, I uh, work with some of the juniors there in Tucson, Arizona. Something I've kind of come to really like. Yeah, it's no, kind of fun. Working with juniors oh, sure. is always fun. Sure. Kids are just appreciated that they get to learn something new. Mm -hmm. It's funny. You should see their face when you sit there. and you, I'm sure you've seen it because you do it. But you sit there and say, okay, this is how you go about running these balls. This is what you want to do. Here's how you want to do it. And then you get up there and execute it to perfection sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they just look at you like, wow. And you just turn around and say, pay attention, practice. And you'll be doing the same thing. And you can go wow to yourself. I like shooting the seventh and the fifteenth. And then the fifteenth. I totally, I totally, this is awfully tight. I don't know yeah, why he's why, even going to go at yeah. this. See, he was hoping the eight went over, but why? So now you push the one way over. Yeah. The eight's next to out of play. I don't know if I agree with that, but I'm also not multi-time U.S. Open anything. Mm-hmm. Be a good question. You know, it's funny if you could uh, sit down and review review the the match and ask a pro like Shane, you know, best one of the best players in the world, if not the best, uh, about shots like that. Sit there and say, "All right, explain to me why you did this." instead of just shooting the seven and then coming back for this ball and coming around. A lot of it is, uh, I mean, not to speak for him or anybody mm -hmm. else, but myself in particular, it's just comfort, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you're able to execute something you feel like is going to be, you know, you, you don't want to take the extra steps. It's almost like a lazy tendency. Mm. Not saying he's ever lazy. I'm just saying it's uh, sometimes you overlook a ball or just don't take the time to think. I will say that sometimes you, you see the progression of what you're shooting and you can get lost in it. Yes, I, I, I agree with that, definitely. It's just, that's just, just how I planned it out and the fact that I'm a little bit off, it's not going to change it. I don't feel like readdressing and because when you readdress, you have to change usually your whole plan or a couple shots to get back to where the, the key to the rack is.
so clean. Break shot. Could be uh, seven in the side and go side rail, bottom rail. You know, yesterday we, we watched a match. I don't know if it was you and I or Ben and I, uh, where there was a shot like that. And I thought the player, I, for, oh. I forgot which player He's it was. Stop it, negative angle, and okay. the six and go right it. into it. Where I thought he would do that, go two rails into the bottom of the stack. And um, the shot was up on top. And he went one rail right into the stack. I think it was, I think it was Warren that shot the shot. Don't quite remember. We just had one where Gabe actually shot the ball that he just pocketed in the side mm -hmm. and missled it one rail into the mid part of the stack, and it was pretty effective. Sure. Because it's about where Shane's going to meet the 8 and the 13. Mm -hmm. So you're aiming for right between the 8 and the 13, probably pocketing the corner ball. 13 and the 11, yeah. yeah. So he hit the 13 full in the face. Made that wing Made ball another. again. That was the second ball to it, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, the wing ball was the, f the 15. I was watching for that, that at that point because I wanted to see where he hit if he's making the wing ball consistently. Um, and uh, it was the ball next to the wing ball that just trailed in. Into the stack. Shane runs this one, uh, which I'm thinking he's probably the favorite to. Uh, that'll put him at the halfway mark. He has he has no hesitation to shoot over a ball like this. No, he's done it all his life. Yeah. Us mere mortals tremble at that shot over a ball like that. And you make a good point, Mitch. If you're playing a lot, if you're, you know, if you're playing all the time, yeah, that's not a problem. Nature. Second nature. Oh, it's second nature. It goes back into the problem how, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people never ding their cue on a table. Like, if you want to talk about a bad habit, but mm -hmm. when Shane does it with that shaft, a lot of people will do it. They'll ding it. I've even caught myself. I'm like, man, if this was a wooden cue, ivory ferrule, like, I'd be twisted if I ever did that. Like, <laughs> you just don't do it. Just because the equipment's changed, it doesn't mean your attitude should. Mm -hmm. You know, and what other people have as a fear doesn't necessarily need to be your own. I totally understand. And actually, you know, especially I see this with younger players. They, they're fearless when they're playing. And all of a sudden, somebody tells them how hard a shot that they found extremely easy is. And now that they think about it, like, oh. they start, oh, it's, this is hard, huh? Yeah. And the next time they have it, well, so-and-so told me this is a hard shot. Yeah, they succumb In to In the it. back of their head, no, exactly. Man, keep it easy. He's getting a rhythm to where he's waiting for his cue ball to get where it's going to land so he can shoot. Yeah, he's picking up the pace a yeah, little bit. He's he trying to run away with it. He sees the finish line. He wants it. And Billy's kind of like me, sitting in the chair yawning. <laughs> hey, Tim, can we get a shot of Billy? sprawled out on the booth <laughs> saying, hey, we going to dinner after this? His run started at 32, I believe. Billy trying to pump up the crowd, actually, for his road dog, Shane. He says, we need some clapping in here. <laughs> Yeah, 
four ball on the side. He apparently really doesn't like that four ball on the side. If he runs into the 15-8, he could come up with nothing. That's yeah, why he's touched on the seven. Yeah, that's why he's just taking a look at this. Table with inside, you're on the seven and the five, and then you're back in working order. This summer here at Griffs, they will host the U.S. Open 10 ball championships and the U.S. Open 8 ball championships. Back to back. The 10 ball starts first, August 8th through the 10th, and then the 11th through the 13th is the 8 ball. So now I'll shoot the 7 ball because he didn't come through and bump any of the balls in the stack. Maybe roll a hair forward, get on the 6 for the side pocket, or just... Uh, shape for the five possibly mm -hmm. and if the way these tables are playing uh, playing now are any indication these tables should be playing great then too our sponsors are predator cyclop in fact they are using the cyclop hyperion balls JB Cases, Discount Custom Apparel, Kamui, and of course the cloth they're playing on, this beautiful diamond table, is Simonis. All these U.S. Opens, with the exception of the nine ball, I believe, are products of Q Sports International. really do do a lot for pool. Uh, who does more? Just look at the uh, BCA Pool League, the USA Pool League. The amount of tournaments coming into the area, trying to keep them at about the same time. And by the way, for those of you out there who haven't seen the schedule, uh, those dates will be changing. I believe in 2020 they go to March. I think they've, we've had that um, poster on the board a few times on the screen for you. Uh, and um, they, they'll be in the March, April uh, time frame for like the next three years. And then they go to a little bit of a different time frame. If the players take a break, we'll try to get that on the screen for you so you can take a look at it. Maybe take a little uh, picture of it. Uh, although all that is available, all that information is available at uh, playcsipool.com. If you like the brackets, if you want to see the brackets for, um, for this tournament or for past tournaments, and it's the same place. I'm sorry, it's not the same place. It's uh, ctsondemand.com for brackets, tournament brackets. Back to picking up the pace. Going to make this uh, 88 to 10. And that'll be a 56 ball run. Once he gets to 88, this, I believe this, racks, this run started at 32. Back up, kind of on the same line the cue ball is now, right there. Current score is 88-10, Mr. Van Bowling. We've Mr. had the, table. the pleasure of a great achievement by a gentleman by the name of John Schmidt, and it came at the same time of the, as, uh, as this U.S. Open Straight Pool Championship. He felled the 65-year-old standing record 
stood for 65 years, set by William Moscone, of 526 balls. He blew by it uh, by 100 balls. Quite an achievement. Absolutely. 44 racks plus 10 balls. He accomplished it at uh, Easy Street Billiards in Monterey, California. What a breakout. Went completely through the rack. Now no two balls touch, and the 15 could be his breakout. The 14 could be his breakout. The one at the bottom of the rack could be his breakout. He's debating, do I bump the 11, 7? No, because then I could come up. Mm -hmm. He's going to come across the top of the 7 foot to 7 of the rail and out. Most, right. yeah. Most of the month of May he spent at Bull Shooters in Phoenix, Arizona, and Peoria. Yep. Uh, working six hours a day trying to accomplish that feat. So part of that set him up for all of this. Great success story. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Shane's on his way to, he's 56, so this will be 70 if he runs these out. Far cry from 626. Yeah, but ask John Schmidt if he's won every U.S. Open there is to be had. Because that's what this man's on the quest for. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And he says, I only need 150. I'm not worried about 626. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No, Just not at all. <laughs> you know, definitely uh, to be living in the time that we do with the talent that we come across uh -huh. on a regular basis. Uh, it's extraordinary to see and be a part of. By the way, a little plug for our, our sponsor. That feat was accomplished. Uh, 626 balls were accomplished by using a Predator Revo. That Revo stands for revolutionary. So that's what they've been doing, changing yes. the game. And actually, you know, Predator has led the way with innovation, uh, new products. And have led the way, and they've been copied by other manufacturers. I believe they were pretty much with the 314, the first manufacturer aboard with the low deflection. Yeah, with, the with splicing, low deflection, the splicing. Of right, the laminated, you yes. might want to call them laminated cues. So, uh, don't hold me to it, please, but uh, I, I believe that is that to be the case. I believe there's nothing stopping this man except himself. Most of the time that players, you know, the table changes hands, it's usually at the break when they uh, either don't get to the break shot, um, hit the stack incorrectly, you know, scratch off the stack, lose the ball, hit it too hard, too soft. We've seen some times where they just freeze up against the ball and have nothing. So that's usually if it's going to change hands, it changes hands there. Well, Shane will also buy, uh, if he defeats Billy right here, then uh, he'll win the all-around. He'll lock up the all-around. Sure. Uh, it's been him and Billy in both finals and nobody else has played. I mean, yeah, nobody has a chance for those points. And what Mitch is referring to is in addition to the prize money, which is $8,000 for first place and $4,400 for second place, uh, the all-around highest point uh, player gets uh, an extra $3,500 and entry 
uh, an invite to the Predator 10 ball, she which is actually so worth. Much English, come around again and hit the stack again. You went all the way up the table, come back down. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The Shane's not going to let Billy to the table again. I really don't see him doing it unless he gets lady or lazy or some freakish roll. I'm thinking he's going to run all the way out. Well, three racks is 42 is a, uh, I'm sorry, 28 is 42 balls. So this he needs 10 balls and eight balls. You know, it, it, it would be kind of almost hilarious for Shane to just look over at Billy and say, take a nap, dude, you're not getting up. You um, might look at him and say, don't worry, I'm buying dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can laugh, and the reason we can laugh is actually Shane and Billy were laughing at the beginning and during oh, the first uh, two or three racks of the, of, of the game. They're road dogs. Uh-huh. Billy's just, uh, you know, getting better and better every day. He, he made he, he made that bank pool look so simple, didn't he? I, and then well, and Shane got back. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was just saying, then, and then Shane got up, and both their matches went hill hill, and within the last th the, down to the last three balls each time. Yeah, but I mean, like you said, you know, look at it from Billy's standpoint. Shane's 35 years old, established been established you know the uh it's like people said oh my god this player was great this player was great well the problem is they were in the era of michael jordan so it kind of got you know not rec as much recognition like alan iverson for instance mm -hmm. and i'm sorry guys i'm a, I'm a basketball, a basketball fan. freak not, yeah. not not freak not a fanatic <laughs> just a fan so it's something i know a little bit not quite as well as cool but that's you know this instance here uh Shane's been uh, established. His uh, kind of breakout year was 2007. And, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I know every tournament I run into him, I'm like, oh, nice to see you too. I hope everything's well. All right, enjoy whipping my backside. You know what I mean? It's well, I, I do recall the tournament where uh, you, you know, traded favors with him. Yeah, it was finally nice to get one under my mm -hmm. belt. I beat him on the bar table here and there, but I mean, that's that's a bar table. This, this big box is what means something to me. I saw you do it on this very big, not, it wasn't this very big box, I'm sorry. It was no, one of the tables one further right down. Over there. Yeah. yeah, it's table 23. Yeah, because at that time, actually, this table here, the stream table, had uh, tighter pockets. Yes. And since then, they've, um, they've traded tables. Oh, man. He is just making quick work of this. Yes. He is. He just, he, you know, he doesn't give us much to talk about. Oh, just phenomenal work ethic, and here it is paying off. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you guys have kids that play junior leagues and juniors, you yourself, if you're watching. Yeah, what? He, uh, I guess you won't see it here. I thought he was going to be on. He might shoot the three ball, and we'd see that pre shot routine we alluded to earlier with the feet and then here's a good and he'll step into the shot stop and he'll just roll forward a little bit not too much yeah, he might actually stop it right there yeah yeah he's feeling it he's like give my trophy give my money the current score is 116 to 10 Mr. Van Boning Mr. Van Boning is at the table has he had a 100-ball run yet? No, he's uh, 16 balls short of it. Okay. He's at 84. That's his highest run so far. He's he's even with his highest run so far. He ran 84, I believe, in the last match. Oh, there's... <gasps> we jinxed him. Did Everybody he miss the ball? Said, oh, my God. Look at his cue Billy, ball. Billy said, no way. <laughs> Look at his cue ball. <laughs> Billy pushed him out of the way. He's like, and I'm hooked. <laughs> Look at this... Now he's taunting him. He's like, you got a shot? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Billy having fun with him. 
And, and we jinxed him. He tied his, he tied his high. It's all right. He'll get over he it. He just promised he wouldn't run more than 84 balls. Billy able to make that six ball. Did he spin around the ball? He was able to back up. <laughs> He's saying I made one. I feel weird. I feel weird. He was laying down on the, on the seat there, pretty much sprawled out, as you mentioned. Gets up. See, he even said, I, I was thinking that was pretty close. He says, I almost hit that ball into the rail. Oh, that 114 over on the right-hand side there, like he's, the one he's hitting now. Again, the 114 is still a little bit of a, a nuisance. Both balls, the 11 and the 14, the 15, are good break balls. Just got rid of one. Mm -hmm. monster number say a run of uh, 140 balls then he's in contention to steal that all around oh. because it was a him and Shane in the uh, finals of the bank so he'd be the it only would one that really have a good shot at stealing it from him and so it would come down to wh whoever would finish the one pocket higher Shane or Billy good good mind you forward or stop? Answered that question pretty quick. Let's just see what Billy does here. I got him right where I want him. in the chair. That's where you always want your opponent. You guys hear, heard what Billy said. He says, I got him right where I want him. The place I want my opponent is in the chair. And uh, you must be able to see the 11. He's not panicking. Of course, he hasn't panicked yet. And that is the high of the tournament, I believe. It's 84 balls run twice by Shane Van Boning. Yeah, the only person that can beat it is the guy at the table. Yeah. And it'd have to be right now, because if Shane gets back to the table, I don't see it being a good thing. <laughs> 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 at least not for Billy.
three ball combo. Oh, as we had mentioned, yours truly coming back to the table. Um, I don't know that I like Philly's shot selection. I, I would have to actually, I would have to call that a little reckless. And not because he shot the three ball combo, because he shot it very nonchalantly. But that's part of his style, too. So maybe not. So that was a 19 ball run by Billy Thorpe. And now uh, Shane starts out with starts at 116. It's funny when he was at 116, you asked me uh, something to do with the number 32 was my answer, and he missed it. He missed the ball. See, yeah, the, these shots, uh, I don't like shooting the balls that far away, the, the pocket being that far away. These guys shoot them effortlessly. You do too. I like the close ones, like, you know, your typical straight pool player. Below the side pockets. Everything below the side pockets to the corner pockets. A couple of shots to the sides. Yeah, and, no, you know, things work well. Draw out to the center. He's probably going to stop it. Mm. Current score is 125 to 29 in favor of Shane Mr. Benson. Shane 25 balls. Cue ball came to the top of the table, to the head part of the table. For this 10 ball, 10 ball came up and said, I'm going to give you a short shot. You know, watching Shane play and watching Billy play, it's kind of looks like they're having a friendly game. And it looks like they're practicing almost. Shane deferring away from the 10 ball, shooting the 9 ball because he wanted to open the stack. Um, and he's going to be mad. Sure. I don't understand why he wouldn't go from the 10 ball to get shorter on the 3 and work his way down, get shorter on the 11 ball and work his way down yeah, close to the either. rack. That's a cut. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, he's going to hit the, s the top part of the seven there, and let's see where the cue ball ends up. Oh, he's going to miss it all together. He's going to draw away from it. No, he hit it. And the run continues. I see a lot of the one-pocket players coming in here in preparation for their U.S. Open one pocket bid starting tomorrow at noon. Mitch says, I can't wait to get out of the booth and start hitting balls out here. I yeah, need to be ready I'm too. I'm trying to stand up and just shift my Stretch, legs a little. Yeah. Yeah. down for these balls down here, the 14, the 10, 
I'm sorry, the 15 there. He'll deal with the three balls there on the bottom of the table. Probably do something about creating a break shot unless he's going to save that one ball. I haven't seen, like I said, I still haven't seen anybody come off the side pocket and, you know, fly into the rack. Uh, Billy did last set against Warren. Ah. Uh -huh. Was that when I was taking my nap? Yep. Okay. Sometimes I have to have these young guns wake me up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's really been a privilege. I'm thankful these that guys. they asked me to commentate. Uh, don't, what a shot. Don't you actually get to see the game from a different perspective? Uh, every once in a while, yeah. yeah it's nice you know? being able to uh, appreciate some of the patterns that they choose. Sure, and, uh, sure. You know, if you're playing, then you get punished for your decisions. Out here, I'm not getting punished, so it's kind of <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, when I first started doing commentary, when we had the Arizona Desert Classic Tour, you know, I'd, between matches, I'd get up in the mic, and everybody looked at me like I was crazy, but uh, I enjoyed it. And um, uh, the, the only problem I got into was I started thinking about that when, uh, when I was shooting. Yeah. And that's one thing you cannot do is have thoughts in your mind um, that distract from, from, from playing. And just being mindless. You want to be mindless when you shoot for the most part. Well, Shane's only going to need 11 after he gets shape on this break. Well, yeah. He's going to hit this with high, maybe high left go. with two rails. Mm, go forward two rails to right to the center of the table. As George said. Pretty close. Billy said not even close, joking around. What's that? Billy said not even close, joking around. <laughs> All he needs is this rack. The race is to 150. This is the finals of the U.S. Open Straight Pool Championships for 2019. It's almost like watching the finals of the U.S. Open Bank Pool. Short banks where there's only nine balls, though. That was the difference. Now there's a lot of balls on the table. Shane's smiling because he realizes he's on the 14. Billy's up behind him. Pretty shot. Stay out of the way, nine. <laughs> Billy says block his path. <laughs> um, Billy actually missed a shot similar to this. It was further out um, to lose the match. It's a shame. early in this uh, tournament when they met earlier. Just looks like a machine. And as you heard John Lehman say, he's playing for five balls. Shame was just confirming. And counting them down. That just puts pressure on Shane. Oh, he got behind the ball. <laughs> uh, cutting, the, cutting the two or playing the 12? I think I play the 12. He's cutting the two. Or he's playing the two in the corner. Fifteen ball in the six ball. That'll do it. Thank you guys for tuning in, and Billy and Shane are going to go have some victory dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in with us. Um, hope you enjoyed that match. Shane put on a great exhibition. We'll start tomorrow with the one pocket. Thanks very much.